So you're scrolling through Reddit or maybe Facebook or some forum, and we've all seen them. Maybe you've even posted one. Those, did I do a good PC part picker post? And then you click on it, and there's a retail copy of Windows 10 sitting there, slapping you in the face for one to two hundred bucks. Just stop. There's literally zero reason for an individual to be paying a hundred dollars or more for Windows. And maybe, just hear me out, but maybe there's no reason for you to pay for it at all. And I'm not talking about stealing it. I'm talking about legit, licensed, and activated Windows 10 for free. But first, a word from our sponsors. Just kidding, I, I don't have any sponsors. But first, a little backstory. If you were using Windows during the heyday of Windows 7, you might remember the Windows 10 upgrade assistant. At some point, you downloaded an update that turned Windows into the computer equivalent of those people that work at kiosks and malls pushing you to upgrade to Windows 10 every five freaking minutes. I mean, do people still do that? Like, work at kiosks and malls, is that still a thing? Like, I, I literally don't know, I haven't been to one in like 10 years. Anyhow, it was probably a bad reference. Moving on. If you were like me, you were happy with Windows 7, and even though it was free, you knew what an abomination Windows 8 was. And personally, I wasn't ready to jump ship until other people beta tested it first. Eventually, Microsoft stopped pushing the upgrade assistant, and a lot of people thought that meant the end of the free upgrade. I finally decided to move to Windows 10, and found that you could still do the uh, free upgrade through the Windows Accessibility website. However, eventually even that went away. So game over, right? Actually no. It might surprise you, but it's been free this entire time if you still had a copy of the Upgrade Assistant. Those activation servers have never been taken offline, and I can't tell you how many systems I've upgraded to Windows 10 over the years for free. The problem is, in order to do it, you had to install Windows 7 first and get it activated. Now, with these older pre-builts, like the Optiplex project that I've been working on, not a problem, they were designed to work with Windows 7. But if you're trying to do this with a modern computer, it can become a real pain in the butt. Still, it was doable. For example, I used this method on my uh, editing system with 3950X using the Windows 7 Pro license that I originally bought when I was running a 2600K in my main rig. But what about now? From the sounds of it, ain't nobody got time for that. Thankfully, with the newest release of Windows 10, they quietly made it easier almost as if Microsoft doesn't actually care about making money on Windows 10. So to do this, we need installation media with the latest release of Windows 10, as we're going to be doing a clean install. You can do this with uh, Microsoft's media creation tool, which I'll link to down in the description. Also, you're obviously going to need a Windows 7 or Windows 8 key as well. But if the key is invalid, or it's been used too many times consecutively to uh, activate its original OS or Windows 10, the activation won't work. It might let you install, um, but once you uh, connect to the internet, it just won't activate. So just something that you need to keep in mind. And I'll give you some options at the end of the video in case that's something you're dealing with. So since we're going to be doing a clean install, you're going to want to make sure that you have um, everything backed up since we're going to be formatting the drive. If you want to cover your bases, you can make an image of your current install using something like Macrium Reflect Free, uh, or you can install on, a, uh, on another drive uh, just to get it activated, even if you're not going to use that drive, as once it's activated, the activation will follow motherboard. Uh, but more on that in a second. Before we start the installation, it's standard practice to unplug all of the drives in the system, save for the one you're installing to. This helps eliminate any confusion since you don't want to be blowing away partitions on drives that might have data that you actually care about on. Also, I highly suggest having a thumb drive with all of your drivers downloaded to it, as well as disconnect the system from the internet because I've had more than a few issues with the drivers that Windows installs, and I just prefer to do it myself. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and start the installation process by popping in your USB drive or DVD if you're going with an ancient method. 
Now, you want to boot up to the USB drive by bringing up the boot menu, which involves furiously tapping one of the function keys until it pops up. Typically, it's F11, but not always. For example, they used F12 uh, for the Optiplex. Just check with your motherboard manual or your system manual if that doesn't work, or you can do the boot override from the BIOS. I'm just gonna select my USB drive, and after a few minutes, we'll come to this screen where you'll uh, select your language. And then we'll just click Install Now. Now we're to the point where you're going to punch in that Windows 7 or 8 key. Now, if you've already installed and activated Windows 10 on this system, just click, I don't have a product key. If you do click that, it will ask you what version of Windows 10 to install. If the key you originally used was a home key, pick home. If it's a pro key, you guessed it, go with pro. Then it should take you to the license screen. If you entered a key, it will take you right to the license screen as it knows from the product key which version to install. And unless you have the better part of a day to read the license agreement, just check accept and move on. On the next screen, I always choose custom, but you can choose the first one if you just can't wipe the drive for some reason. Now, the next screen is why I suggested you disconnect any of the other drives in the system. What I do is blow away all the partitions and start clean. If you have another drive connected, it's possible you could kill partitions on another drive you didn't mean to and lose data. Anyways, after I've cleared out all the partitions, I select the remaining unallocated space and click next. If you're using a USB thumb drive, this is going to be pretty quick. If you went the DVD route, well, carving out the Lord of the Rings trilogy on some stone tablets would probably be quicker. You might want to go grab a sandwich. Once it's done, it's going to reboot a couple of times, and eventually we're going to get to this screen. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm in the US and I don't need a second keyboard layout, so skip. Now here's another reason I disconnect from the internet. I don't want to sign in with a Microsoft account. If you do, the Windows 10 license will be bound to that account, not the motherboard. Just something else to keep in mind. I just want to do a local account since that's what I prefer. So I click that I don't have internet, then continue with limited setup. Then you can pick a username and password. I didn't use one, but it's setting you up with an admin account and you should definitely use one. I'm just doing some testing on this system, uh, so it's not something I need to worry about. All right, so activity history, nope. Digital assistant, also no. And now I flip all of these to no. I could go on all day about privacy, but just know that you're giving some up using Windows one way or the other. But I choose to minimize it as much as I can. Anyways, now you can click accept and eventually it will get you to the desktop. This is where I install all the drivers from the manufacturer's websites. Once I'm done, I reconnect to the internet so Windows can activate, but it's gonna pop up with this first. Since this is my personal network, I just click yes because I do want it to be discoverable, but if you're connected to a public network, I highly suggest clicking no. Then just click okay and then skip for now. Now you can go back to the system properties and it should show that it's activated. And now you're free to install all of your software, games, optimize Windows or whatever. Now, what if the activation doesn't work? It's because the key has been marked as invalid or needs to be validated through the phone or text system. This means you'd have to try and do it the old way where you get Windows 7 installed first and then activated. Then you can validate there and uh, then do the upgrade. And I'll have a link to the upgrade assistant down in the description as well. However, if that sounds like too much work for you, there are other options. First, you can get your hands on another seven or eight key and you can go to the settings, then updates, then activation. Then click on change product key and you can enter the seven or eight key here. And if it's valid, it will activate. I've tried it, it does work. This is also great if you already have Windows 10 installed and don't wanna reinstall. Next, you could always grab a key from SCD keys uh, for a few bucks. Now, I don't have any experience with them, but other tech tubers like Greg Salazar and Brian over at Tech yes City have and I trust those guys. Besides, even if you do end up with a license that eventually gets deactivated for some reason, you can just buy another one for a few bucks, enter it in, and get rid of that watermark. You can even buy Windows 10 OEM DVDs on eBay with sealed licenses if you're super paranoid, and it will still be a lot cheaper. Or you can just live with the annoying watermark. Um, Windows will still work, you'll just lose a small bit of functionality on the personalization side. 
I might even say that you're better off buying a cheap pre-built with a Windows 7 Pro license on it and flipping the system rather than buying a retail copy of Windows 10. So one way or another, you've got options here. All of them better than paying over 100 bucks for Windows. So if you've got a PC part picker list with a retail copy of Windows 10 sitting on it, just delete it. And then you can spend the extra cash on a higher end component like a better GPU or something. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you know what to do. Consider subscribing and click the bell if you want to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I do try to respond to as many people as I can. Thanks for all of your support and I will catch you guys with the next video.